In the Napoleonic Wars, many consider the rivalry between Great Britain and France as the most potent fight. It heroically began during the French Revolution and dramatically ended with the Battle of Waterloo and Wellington walking through the streets of Paris. However, the British spent most of the war using their naval supremacy to restrict the French Empire, while subsidizing their European allies with money, arms, and other supplies to keep the war effort going. However, France's true land rival was the Austrian Empire, who would fight them on and off throughout the entirety of the wars. Many units would rise to fame from this rivalry, including the Austrian O'Reilly Chevaliers, Jaegers, and their fearsome Austrian Grenadiers, who would prove to be experts at urban combat and shock tactics. Becoming a Grenadier was no easy feat in the Austrian army. You were required to have had at least one act of valor in combat, good marksmanship, have fought in at least one campaign, and a minimum of five years' service. These requirements were higher than the average French Grenadier, of course, to become an Austrian Grenadier, you also had to be physically taller and stronger than the average Austrian soldier. A Grenadier can't fight alone, however, and therefore a large organization is required to keep the men ordered and in fighting shape. A Grenadier unit originates in the regiment. Two companies were formed per regiment, and instead of being under a battalion, they were attached to the regimental staff, being overseen directly by them. During wartime, they would be detached from their parent company and sent to form ad hoc grenadier battalions. These companies had a regulated member count, which differed between German and Hungarian units. By the end of 1807, during Archduke Charles' reforms, the grenadier company was led by a Hauptmann, or captain. On his company staff was an Oberleutnant, who served as second in command, an Unterleutnant, who was a junior officer, and a Feldwebel who was essentially a drill sergeant, and served some of the duties you'd expect from a regimental sergeant major. These four men were crucial to the success of the Grenadier Company, especially when it was split off from its parent regiment. Each company contained four Zuga, or platoons, among which would be split six corporalen, or corporals. The specialists of a company would be the tamborin, or drummer, three private dionaires who were selected among the half-invalids of the regiment, those being the men who were wounded on previous campaigns. These men would still stay on campaign, but they would be exempt from typical military duties. In exchange, they were required to assist company staff with quartermaster duties. One Zimmermann was also attached. This man was typically a carpenter or other worker. He would assist the company in basic maintenance, and the role eventually evolved into something similar to the French sapper. However, it is important to clarify that there was no extravagance spent on this Austrian uniform, and they were not held to the same requirements as their French contemporaries. The last part of the Austrian Grenadier Company was the 120 to 140 Grenadiers. These were the men that would fight and die for the Emperor, and their number varied over the course of the war. Hungarian Grenadier Companies had the same staff makeup, but often had 150 to 160 Grenadiers. A Grenadier Company is all nice and fine, but it is useless without a broader organization. While on campaign, the two Grenadier Companies from each regiment would be detached. They would unite with a further four Grenadier Companies to make a battalion. This meant that each Grenadier Battalion had six companies from three different regiments. The army staff would try their best to keep ethnic groups together. For example, the Grenadier Battalion Hohenlohe, composed of the 1st, 29th, and 38th Infantry Regiments, were all recruited from Moravia or Silesia. The commander of the combined battalion was required to be from one of the parental regiments. Once again referring to the Hohenlohe Battalion, Major Hohenlohe was of the 1st Kaiser Franz Infantry Regiment. The major for the battalion was typically chosen from anyone who could be spared from their parental regiment. However, at the conclusion of the Napoleonic Wars, it was determined that the youngest major selected would lead the battalion. In every Austrian military campaign, except for 1805, the Grenadiers would be split off in this fashion. During the 1809 campaign, a total of 17 Grenadier battalions would be established, which would form the 2nd Reserve Corps, or simply called the Grenadiers Corps. They would further be subdivided into two divisions, each with two brigades of roughly four battalions. The Grenadiers would often be kept in reserve and used tactically to strengthen faltering troops or assault enemy weak points. The Grenadiers would also become experts in urban combat, although this was more by accident rather than design. Grenadier uniforms for the most part resembled that of the regular line infantry, that being for the Germans a white, single-breasted coat with white breeches and black gaiters. The Hungarians wore tight, light blue breeches with yellow braids on the pants. They did not wear the black gaiters. Some units symbolically retained the fuse that was prevalent in the early 18th century, which was used to light the physical grenades that grenadiers of that time carried. However, in the Napoleonic Wars, grenadiers no longer carried those grenades, making the fuse more of a stylistic choice. 
Additionally, some Grenadier uniforms had a flaming grenade symbol across the strap or other cartridge box. It seems that there were multiple variations. The headwear was where the Grenadiers distinguished themselves from the regular infantry. The regular infantry would wear shakos or caskets, but the Grenadiers wore a tall, imposing fur cap, with the regiment's unique color added to the back part. These caps were fixed on the front with a plate that showcased the Imperial Eagle. Overall, the Austrian Grenadiers were a powerful tactical reserve that often proved very fortunate to the Austrian General Staff that deployed them. Unfortunately, the Austrian General Staff were often incompetent or absurdly cautious, especially at the beginning of the Napoleonic Wars. Therefore, while the Grenadiers fought and died for strong tactical victories, they were often sold out from their General Staff who failed on the strategic level. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe, as it lets me know that there are those out there who enjoy this content. I strive to make every video better, so please reach out to me with any feedback. Have a good one.